Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Nick Drinks. I am your host, Nick Britsky. We are here back in the studio and we are talking about one of my new favorite brands. This is Uncle Nearest 1856. And to talk about this, we have Lazar Favors. He is the Michigan market manager as well as the legacy liaison for Uncle Nearest. Welcome so much. Hey, hey, Nick, how you doing, man? Thanks for having me. Thank you, sir. So how long have you been working with this brand? Uh, since May of 2000, well, I'll say it like this. I was introduced to the brand in 2018. I kind of introduced it to the city at uh, one of our film, me and my wife, we conduct a film festival every year. So I introduced it through our film festival in 2018, July. And I became a part of the brand um, officially May, 2019. They just, they liked the work that you were doing. Yeah, yeah, they can't, <laughs> they really, they truthfully, they, they, um, they sponsored several of my events leading up to September. In September of 2018, they asked me, how can we strengthen our relationship? And I just said, come see me. And they came to see me. And we, you know, we, we talked about it and started creating this, uh, this agreement and partnership. And there it is. And here we are. And um, let's talk a little bit about... So the brand, while well, the brand is 1856, kind of has that great heritage, which we'll talk about in a second. How long has the this current product been on the market? Uh, 1856 been on the on the market since uh, I want to say uh, early 2000, no, late 2017. Not available in Michigan, but I think it was only available in the southern state at the time. And, and, and Michigan's kind of notorious for getting products a little bit later. So I feel like having yes. it within a year window, that's, that's not too bad. Yes. yes. Uh, so talk a little bit about this. This has an amazing history. Um, Uncle Nearest is, is this huge character that I don't think a lot of people know about, you know, give us kind of the backstory of the brand. Well, Uncle Nearest is, uh, and I always use, I always really, I'm always um, sure of my words. What I mean by that is Uncle Nearest, if I tell you Uncle Nears is the gentleman who taught Jack Daniels how to distill whiskey, I don't need to tell you from what era. You kind of know what that was and know where that was. I've always looked at this person as a gentleman. He's the first African-American master distiller on record. We're talking in the 1800s. We're talking Lynchburg, um, Lynchburg, Tennessee. And we're in a time where this specific type of friendship didn't exist. And, and, I mean, you even talk about the first African-American master distiller. Going yes. back that far, at least in the U.S., he's probably one of the first master absolutely. distillers. Yeah. A absolutely. He's, he's the gentleman, again, he's the gentleman who taught Jack Daniels. And, and just to clear that story even further, Jack Daniels never owned slaves. He was, when he met Uncle Nearest, he was only a teen boy himself. So that didn't happen, right? So just to clear that up, a lot of misconceptions about that. Uh, and in fact, that... Um, Uncle Nearest and, and, and uh, Jack Daniel became extremely close as in far as a friendship. They did a lot of, uh, at that time, they called them fairs. And we all know what fairs are. And they won all the fairs. And Jack Daniel was an incredible salesperson. So, and he was young enough to get into certain spaces where if you're a kid, nobody's looking at you sell what they call hooch at the time. <laughs> right. So he was an incredible marketing guy. And they uh, strengthened their relationship. Um, once uh, Jack Daniels got old enough, he bought that distillery. And of course, he uh, invited uh, Uncle Nears, Nathan Green, to be a part of that, uh, to be his master distiller over there. So, w without getting fights and without getting anyone yelling at you, yeah. why is this story just kind of coming out? I feel like, at least to my knowledge, it's just coming out now. Why, why did it take so long to kind of get it in the public sphere? I think, I think Nick, when you think about stories, when you think about stories during that that type of time without going into what that is, because we all know what, that, what exists in that time. There, there are stories, there are millions of stories like that, right? Those stories don't get fed because this story had fuel to it. I think that's how it became, how, how it was zoomed in front of us because it had fuel. And what I mean by that is uh, our CEO, uh, Fawn Weaver, she's a, um, she's a brilliant, individual and she was reading um jack daniel autobiography and in that autobiography jack daniel mentions mentions um uh, uncle nathan near nearest green over 50 times so of course if you're mentioning a person more than you mention your own parents in this autobiography I'm, we have questions and yeah. she was just one of those persons who had questions 
who sought after the truth, who literally moved down in Tennessee, bought that land, uh, uh, <laughs> brought 20 uh, historians and, 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 and people who could find out that truth and um, sought after uh, Jack Daniels family members who were still alive, sought after Uncle Nairs, Nathan Green family members who were still alive. And in fact, real quick, uh, Nathan's great-great-granddaughter and Jack Daniel's great-great-granddaughter were best friends. In fact, uh, one, the, la the last one just passed away last March at 105 years old. So yeah, so yeah, it, it's, it's an incredible story. The story is bigger than whiskey. It's much bigger than whiskey. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the juice. Yes. What, what is the relation of the juice to something that uh, Nathaniel Green would have done? Yeah, it, it is the, uh, what they call it, the Lincoln County process. The way it's filtered is the, um, that's what separates, obviously what separates Tennessee from Kentucky. Kentucky is bourbon, Tennessee is whiskey. The way it's filtered. He, he filtered it, um, the whiskey through a, a process that he learned in Africa. Right, exactly. So he learned that in Africa. So that filtering process didn't exist in the States. And so he brought that, that process here. And that's why you t it's a distinctive taste to it. And that's why it's, it's such a, uh, excellent whiskey, and I'm not just saying it because I represent the company. I'm saying it because it is. <laughs> well, and I'm going <laughs> to explain a little bit of movie magic. So you, you gave me this bottle probably about four or five months ago. Yes, indeed. And um, it is definitely not this full. So um, this, <laughs> this right here is our dummy whiskey that we have in here. Um, the, the real life bottle is about here. Right. You have a little bit of that we're going to sip on. But right. I adore this whiskey. There was, there was one night that we probably took off three, four inches of this bottle. I wasn't processing that it's a 50%. So this is a hundred proof. Yes, and it is. That was a rough night. Then it was a rough, <laughs> a rough morning. This is, this is delicious. You don't know. It is, it is such a, a well-crafted product yes, that that high proof does not hit you until it's too late. Until, until, it's, until you had two glasses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that, that's, I, I love when distillers do that. So when distillers have so much faith in the brand that they yes. can say, Hey, we're not going to get you that bare minimum 40% that, yeah, a lot of spirits do taste good at that, but you're also making the most amount of money. Yeah. For someone to come in and say, hey, we're going to lose money on this, give you a higher proof product because we think it tastes better, is, that's, that's awesome. It's a, brilliant, yeah. it's a brilliant strategy, you know, to give you a, a product that's high quality for a, 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 quality, a quality price. I mean, I, I don't, to every, everyone, you have, made, you, have, you have groups of folks who may drink a certain, whiskey because of a certain price or a certain drink. It doesn't have to be with certain spirit for a certain price. This this whiskey, I would buy at $100 a bottle because it's that great. You know what I mean? And again, and I've heard that from several different whiskey connoisseurs. It's, it's a great whiskey. You know, it, it's excellent on the palate. So. And now we, we connected kind of, I would say, right when your distribution was really starting to explode in Michigan. Yes. Um, I, I had I had a challenge just finding the bottle because I was I was going to buy a bottle for right. that TV appearance and I'm like I can't find it. Right. Uh, now I feel like I see it all over the place. So yes, you know, yes. Bravo, okay. you've done a great job. Thank you. I I, I just noticed I was notified uh, and and because I'm I'm so connected to just building something and anything I try to do as far as um, if I'm being, if I'm a part of something I'm a part of it. I didn't even realize we went from uh, last year. Uh, from 500 cases to this year, five times as much. Wow. I had no idea. Uh, I was on the phone with the VP and he was like, yeah, did you know you did? I'm like, I didn't realize it. I'm just working. I'm just doing it. You know what I mean? So, but that was a beautiful thing to hear. And uh, yeah, you know, it's just, I appreciate the how our people, how the community is receiving um, this product and how they're sharing. Because, I mean, I can't do this without those people sharing it and tasting it and filling their glasses without the I can't do it without the on and off premise because it's those people who connect to the customer and allow us to connect to those customers and supply them with such a good product. Well hopefully viewers out there are watching this in the year 2030. The yeah. COVID pandemic has been solved. Everyone's happy living in peace. What <laughs> what do you think um, that pandemic did to your year? Do you think it had positives because people were maybe at home more? Did you have challenges because there weren't as many, as many bars open? Like, how did that interact with your planning? I think, I think 
because we shifted, we we end up uh, supplying um, um, PPE equipment mm -hmm. and, and and things to, to several several Detroit hospitals. I mean, all over the country, first of all, but specifically here in Detroit, we supply N95 masks to hospitals. We supply stores, our account stores, with uh, branded masks and, and hand sanitizers to every account that were in a, a predominantly uh, a community type of uh, area. And so we we kept we stayed relevant. We checked down uh, borrowing the whiskey, and we just turned it, and we kept ourselves involved and in, in, inserted ourselves in community uh, needs. So what that did in turn is, of course, they had people stay home more, but now they have something. Um, now they have something to, to more to do, right? I think we didn't. We actually numbers we actually went up when people stayed home for some reason. <laughs> So I think more people were uh, toasting. Uh, I guess most people toast, oh, I don't have to go to work today. Uh, you know, I can stay home. You know, it was a lot of different reasons, I'm sure. But I think our numbers went up. Well, and they say you celebrate with champagne, and yes. then you celebrate losses with whiskey. Yes. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, another thing that I think you were really on the forefront of is when we had our um, uh, kind of carry out cocktails. Yes. You were you were out there pushing um your, your packages. Yep. Yes. Yeah. And I think I was I think I was the first person out there. Uh and again, that was a brilliant thing. It's like I, we got it. I took it. I made sure that those who were still doing who were doing carry out mm -hmm. got it immediately. So that that I think that helped us and that restaurant stay afloat. You know, I think again, it's just one of those when you see a need and you know something is happening, we didn't focus on the pandemic per se as worry. We focus on what can we do and create and how do we, uh, kind of like an audible, how do we make things happen and simple and work for what's happening without worrying about what's happening. Yeah, and that was, that was great because that, being kind of that first to market, there was a lot of kind of confusion and you know where can I get bottles? Where can I get yeah. this? Where can I get that? And yeah, you you moved to the lightning fast. Thank so, you. Thank yeah, you. and yeah. that's going to show how many bottles you've moved. Yeah. So um, well let's let's sip on it. I know I've sipped on a lot of it, but uh, <laughs> talk about when when you do a tasting. Talk about the flavors that you're picking up on this. Well, when when we do a tasting, um, I go into an account. Maybe a, uh, or you want me to talk about what it tastes like? I have to, you know, yeah, caramel, yeah, 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 yeah. It's the Not caramel. The it's a, yeah, yeah. It's a caramel for me. You know, it's got that caramel, nice heat. It's, you know, it's, it's great. You know, it's, and I hear nothing but greatness about it. You know, I, I get a lot of, uh, I call them older gentlemen with their suits, with their hats. So, and they have a lot of stories about hooch. They call it hooch. It was another name they called it too. Uh, Oh my goodness! What is that other name? Well, you, the one that come in the jar. What is that? They used moonshine. To have? Moonshine. There yeah. it is. So they like, oh, this is good. They'll, they'll call it. Well, this is good shine. This is good moonshine. You know, this is what this is. This, they'll they'll go. They'll talk about the corn, the the charcoal, the these flavors that they separated on their palate. I'm like, that's amazing to be able to do that. Like, I had to. I had to learn that. There's no way I could do that the way they did it. So, but it's a great. It's a great thing. Uh, what what I really like about this is uh, when you get in some of those really well made high proof spirits, your mouth just explodes with flavor and it just kind of coats and hits all the corners. And I think that's what's nice about this. I don't get as much burn as I probably should. Um, yeah. I think it's just it's just a, a flavor explosion, which I absolutely love because this is something you can sit down, you can chew on it, you can enjoy it. Um, yeah, yeah. I was great with cigars too. I hear. You know, and I got to be in the right mood for a cigar, but that's just me. <laughs> me too. I don't, I'm not a cigar guy, but I have, I have a lot of friends and clients that smoke cigars and they, they pair these two things together and, and it's an amazing thing for them. Um, there's at least one other bottle that I normally see paired with this guy. Talk about uh, his 18, friend. The 1884 is our small batch and our small batch, a little known, little known fact we did, did not know is that it's a signature on the back of that bottle of a... Uh, um, of a descendant of Uncle Nearest. So you may get a you may get a batch where you may uh have our uh our new uh master distiller, which is the great great granddaughter of Uncle Nearest. Her name is uh Victoria Butler. So she's our new um distiller, but her name is on the first 
I think ten thousand bottles of Uncle Nearest, eighteen eighty four. Okay. So every every I think every every process or every other barrel, something like there, maybe every state. I'm not really sure exactly. Uh, you will get a name signature on the back of that bottle of uh, one of his descendants. So you've dropped a couple names now. Female master distiller and female CEO. Is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. Yeah. So that, that's that's and that's a rarity. If you go look yeah. out there. Um, I mean, even just having uh, minority owners for brands, uh, yes. that's, that's, it's tough. There's not many out there. So yeah. please keep, yeah. keep doing that because that's, we, yeah. we need this diversity. Yeah. The, and, and, and not even just that, there, the whole team is it's probably 52 of us total throughout the United States. And it's a, it's a well uh, oiled machine. It's a well organized team and it's a very diverse team. We may have, we, we, have people all from all kinds of backgrounds everywhere and as we come together or when we come together we we produce a a uh, incredible um presentation overall you know well and, you look at the u.s that is diverse and yes. by having those various voices those thoughts those ideas you're going to hit more people and be more relevant to more people absolutely Absolutely. It's kind of showing, it's kind of, re, um, it's kind of abiding by what Uncle Nearest and Jack Daniels had. When you think about, again, we're talking about the toughest time for any, any African American in history. Those are the toughest times where you have this relationship, not just with those two gentlemen, but with those two gentlemen in their families. And in that town, again, Uncle Nearest was not a, um, Uncle Nearest, was a, 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 his family was an extremely wealthy family. Both of those families were wealthy. So there were, I mean, uh, Uncle Nair's family had stores downtown. You know, people were uh, sharing popsicles, et cetera, things like that from two different, not just their families, but people in that town because of those two families. They showed you a way to live without looking at each other's uh, skin at that time. So, you know, the story, like I said, when, I, when we say the story is bigger than whiskey, it truly is. You know, we get it, and I'm, what I'm sharing with you, we got from their family. Mm -hmm. that, that's the information that family shared. Well, perfect. If people want to follow you, where can they find you on social media? You can follow me at Lazar Uncle Nearest on Instagram, uh, Detroit's Favorite Uncle on Facebook, and I think I'm Lazar Uncle Nearest on Twitter. Excellent. And if you want to find more about Nick Drinks, you can find me at nickdrinks.com. Uh, youtube.com slash nickdrinks and nickdrinks.com all spelled out on Instagram and Facebook. Lazar, thank you so much. Cheers, my brother. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks so much. Cheers until next time, everyone.